Lord, thank you for waking me up today. Thank you for giving me another day to do your work for your purposes, your will. Thank you for guiding me every second of the day and teaching me how to listen to you so closely every second of the day. You've changed my life radically, and I thank you for that. And I'm willing to follow you wherever you go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Here it is, y'all. Today is Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, we have church. And today in our church, we're going to, everybody that's coming to the, uh, to the uh, online virtual tour to Israel needs to be in the barn today. We got to for instructions and all that. So you guys be at the barn. You may as well come on to church. Amen. And give God some glory, right? Yeah. Amen. See you guys at two o'clock because we, Lord comes first in front of everything, right? We're here for him because of him and all that. So see you at church. Um, God's using young Autumn to give us a good message that he's shown to her about tares in the wheat parable. And she's going to share that with us. And then we're going to give instructions about the uh, tour, which is at six o'clock today. But you guys need to be in the barn um, for the message. And after the message, we'll talk about what we need to do for the tour, the online virtual tour. Okay. So I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. We're coming up on God's feast days, the holiest days of the entire year, man. And to celebrate with our God. I don't know about you guys. I'm stoked, man. It's time to start building your Sukkotes. It's time to get ready to celebrate God. Celebrate the Lord, y'all. Don't you know that? And, and if you don't I see there's a lot of people on YouTube that don't understand God. They don't even know who Jesus Christ is. They really don't. Jesus Christ has cleaned everything, y'all, that was dirty. Things were dirty, not because God, like a pig, God didn't create a pig to be dirty. Sin made that pig dirty. You made that pig dirty, okay? Your sin. Jesus come to clean everything, anything. Yeah, clean it, right? So, like Jesus was talking to his disciples, Paul was talking to them and everything. He's like, if y'all want to eat a pig, because... Somebody came by and made a ridiculous comment about, well, so if I wanted you to feed you cat and dog and rat at my house, it's okay. I'm like, bless your heart. If you eat, if you eat cat, dogs, and rats, if you need help with food, I'd be happy to help you. But I don't know who in their right mind would eat cat, dog, and rats. Uh, pork, everybody eats pork, okay? A lot of people eat pork, but certain religions don't. But pork is edible meat, Okay. Um, cat, dog, rats not meant to be eaten, you know. So, I mean, somebody needs some education there. A little education. Education. Okay? So what Jesus said about the pork and the shelled seafood, and what Paul said, is if you're in Christ Jesus, eat with, it's the law about eating pork, y'all, ain't about because it's a pig. People like that miss the point, okay? This is what Jesus said. Y'all miss the point. The point is you. Your sin makes it unclean. Jesus said, if you're in me, everything that I've created you to eat is meant to be eaten with thanksgiving. So receive a pig with thanksgiving. Receive seafood with thanksgiving. They're meant to be food. Your cat and dog, bless your heart, is not meant to be your food. Okay, I'm sorry that you don't understand that, but I'm willing to help you. Okay, I really am. All right. But Jesus said, if somebody wants to eat pork and you're in Christ Jesus, do you understand how powerful the blood of Jesus is covers and makes that pig clean? Anything that goes through your body is clean. So if you want to eat pork, as it passes through you, it's clean because Jesus is going to come out the other end anyway. It's just going to go right through you. So it's not the pork itself that's not clean. It's you that makes it unclean with your sin. Jesus is talking about your sin, y'all. Father, God, maybe this person don't believe in Jesus. That, you know, it's just hitting me. They don't believe in Jesus. Okay, so I understand why, why they're making these silly comments. This, these people are against Jesus. Yeah? You don't know who Jesus is. And Jesus told me that. When I was with him, he said, my own people don't know my word. That means they don't know me because Jesus is the word. They don't know Jesus, y'all. So anyway, those of you that do and that you're growing and 
that's just a couple of people. That's just like one person really that doesn't seem to understand. I think I've had two people that don't understand Jesus on that level, what he does to purify and cleanse. But for the most part, I've got 99 out of 100 that do. <laughs> you know, but sometimes you run to all kind of people on the internet, y'all, that just, well, they don't want Jesus. That's all there is to it. But those of us that love Jesus and out here working for him and his word, giving you his word, uh, people want to try to give us a hard time. But these are people that, well, like, listen, the same individual that was saying this stuff emailed one of our people in the group. Okay, so these people are, they're tares in the wheat. That's what they are. They need your prayers, but they don't need your support. They need your prayers. Matter of fact, what God said when people out here trying to start trouble like that, he said, get away from them. They're not of me, and they're not here to receive me. They're not even looking for me. They're here to try, they're here to try to destroy you and me, God says. You understand? So you guys be careful. There's demons crawling all over the place out here, y'all. One of them crawled in my own front yard. <laughs> he sure did. One of them crawled right in my house. But God made sure. I knew right away something was wrong. God made sure. Kim, open your door and tell that demon to get out. Kim, tears are in the wheat. They're here to try to destroy. It will manifest. It will manifest. Just continue to teach. Show kindness like you do, Kim. Show love like you do. Continue to help these people like you do. And these demons will manifest. And they are, and they have, and they are, y'all. They manifest it, and some of you be like, wow. And these demons are pulling a couple people out of the church with them. Just a couple. But these people were never really walking right with the Lord in the first place, y'all. So, there's, but a lot of you are. So, y'all, we're on a tight, tight, narrow road. You understand? And here, it's a short walk, though. It's a long walk to heaven. Short walk straight to hell, man. It's a narrow road. Very narrow. It gets to heaven. It's a little bit of a walk. Hike there. Hell is wide, man. You just take one step, you've fallen in. You know, it's real easy to fall into hell. you got to sacrifice to walk with the Lord, y'all. Put up two sacrifices. Submissions, sacrifices, all got to be out of love. And you should be out of love. you got to learn love, y'all. And when you learn to love Jesus, you learn to love other people. And when you love other people, you won't be out here trying to destroy God's kingdom. So you know a Christian by the fruits they bear, right? Like my fruits, you see fruits spitting out all over the place, don't you? You know you do. Some of you, I see your fruits pouring out all over the place. But then, you also know Satan by his rotten fruits, right? You see some of that too. So you guys, now's the time. Get, get right with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Continue in walking with Jesus. You can't walk with Jesus, y'all, if you're walking all around him, okay? What he, what he tells you to do, he's not going to change his mind later. What he tells you to do is permanent. Stay at where he puts you. Continue. Into where he's put you and what he's got you doing. Stay in it. Anything that's ver veering you off to another road is not Jesus. It's the devil himself. And some people follow the devil. They do. Even in the church. They really do. But you know what, y'all? Those of us that's abiding in, walking with, continuing in, rock silent man with Jesus. And we know God. We know he's not confused. We're continuing in. He's blessing the heck out of us. Me, the day that I lost somebody in my ministry, that was a lot of help to me. That was, well, that person was a lot of help. But it's not that I couldn't do what they did. It was just help. And, and they were help. And they didn't give a notice or anything. Just boom, I'm done. Boom, gone. Well, that's, that's not a true Christian that would do that. Just walk off and leave. Boom, done from a church, from, from God's work. That's not, a, that's not how a Christian works. 
like any moral person you give a week or two notice something like that gives the person time to find somebody else and then you know you do you go you, you go but just to walk off that's an insecure scared no i've done something wrong person so they kind of leave you there holding the bag of all of god's work right so i heard god that day in my car he said my daughter don't worry he said i'm gonna give you something better better okay what the world who could this be because you can't trust everybody with with what god has given to you i'll tell you that right now it's that's proven to be a fact they don't care about it like you do when god gives you something but you know what he gave me he did about a month later here come somebody even better <laughs> i'm talking about better as in i can trust this person 100 percent I know this person will never, ever, ever be out to try to hurt me or try to kill our ministry or try to... They, this person won't do that. This person is my family. And I see what God is doing. He brought my this person in that knows a lot about the internet, knows a lot how to use these sites and stuff, how to upload things and this and that and that. Uh, she knows a lot. Matter of fact, that's what she used to do professionally and I'm just like thank you God thank you so much and at the same time God is using this position out with the old and with the new right God is using this position to teach her a lot about him so I see what God is doing God is just a miracle worker he is, so, and he ain't going to let this ministry fall. You can just hang that up. He ain't going to let this, nothing happen to this ministry. It's his. Somebody don't want to follow him, he'll put you right on down, man. Right where you want to be, he'll throw you, he'll put you, he'll say, go ahead, the road that you're on is over there. This road right here, okay. Because you got your free will. Whether he puts you on this path or not, you have your free will. You can. You don't have to walk on this path, y'all. And most people don't. But then he'll bring somebody else in and give them a chance. But don't forget you got your choices. You sure do. Okay. So God is blessing me, y'all, more than I can even accept. I'm getting blessed by God so much. It's just one blessing after another. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's bless, bless, bless. He saved my whole household. I'll tell you something. There was a lot going on inside my house when I was dealing with these certain people. A lot. There was demons floating all, all around, man. They were all around. They even came into my house, y'all. They, they brought the mess to my front yard, to my door. To my door. <laughs> Later on, they wanted to know, what'd you do with that, with, with that upside down cross that was in your yard? I burned it. Why are you asking me about it? It's really weird. Things were falling off the wall when they were here in my house. <laughs> uh, really strange stuff. Man, I knew exactly what was going on. I got up and I laid my hand on this person. I knew what was going on. I said, let me get some oil. And I laid my hand on this person. And I prayed for that person big time. And things falling off the wall right afterwards. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> right? And so I walked up to the front door and opened it and said, get out, Satan, get out, get out, get out, get out. You're not welcome here. The person, they can stay here. But Satan, you can't. You got to go. Get out of my house. And that's exactly what I did. And within four hours, that person was so yancy, so antsy. Um, it was four in the morning. They already had their stuff packed. Standing in the, just standing in my living room, uh, scared to death, uh, looked like they were shaking like a leaf on a tree not knowing what to do like i gotta get out there like i gotta go 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 i'm like wow what's the matter we you know <laughs> well i know what's the matter i just kicked that demon out that person that demon that was in that person you can't that that demon can't stay here this person can stay here but that demon you're not allowed in my house my house is covered and smothered with the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't stand here. So there was a lot of uneasiness there within that individual. They couldn't wait to get out. And they did. They made up a lie. Said a loved one of theirs had a 110 degree temperature. Had to go right now, right now, right now. 110? What are you doing standing here then? 
You've been standing here for four hours knowing your, your family member has a 110 degree temperature. What are you doing standing here? You've been gone. <laughs> you know, there's a whole lot of uneasiness. And that's what demonic possession will do, y'all. And especially when these demons get around. When you come into my home, you're coming into a sanctified, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost spirit-filled home. Those demons can't. They will, they will. Once you enter in my room, my house, they will manifest. Just like they did. They will manifest. They have to in the presence of God. They'll manifest. And then I'll say, you got to get out. I'll stop some oil on that person for protection. The Holy Spirit to protect that person. But that spirit in that person, you got to get out. So God is looking out for me, y'all, because I'm highly anointed by the hand of Jesus Christ himself. And that's just the way that is. Demons can come, but demons will go. You know what I mean? Um, I, I pray for all you people that you follow in God's will, y'all. And quit making up what God's will is. It's not your will, y'all. Well, God brought me here, I know. God's teaching me, using me. You know, God's taught me here more than anywhere in my life. I've got more help here than everywhere. Well, now God's calling me something else. So I said, get out of here. God said, get out of here? Did he really? I don't think so, sisters and brothers. That's not God you're hearing. People will run God down like that and make him sound like he's confused and don't know what he's talking about. Isn't that sad? But those of you that's walking in God's will every day and continuing in his will and working out the little glitches that may come in between you working them out like God said do. You know what God is doing, y'all? He's blessing you. And I told you there's another church member, family member, they come to our barn, and they help too in the barn. Um, that God gave a word to. God is going to bless your family, right? That's what I heard God say. I'm going to bless His family. I'm going to heal and restore His family. And when I said that to him, he come back and said, "Well, actually, my family's falling apart. <laughs> you know, um, my, my my this one this one won't talk to me. That one won't talk to me." I said, well, I know what I just heard God say. So give it about two weeks later, something changed. Comes in church and gives a testimony. God has restored my relationship with this one and, and healing that one. And, and now we're going camping and all this stuff. I said, did I not tell you what Jesus told me? God may tell you what he's going to do, y'all. And you may not see it yet. Well, that's where faith comes in. That's where faith comes in. You understand? So for God to tell you, I'm going to heal and restore your family and this and that. Or anything that he's telling you. And all you see is the negative. Because that may be what you see. God says, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Have faith in me. Who? In Jesus. He says, I could do all things. And if I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And he did do it. <laughs> Amen. You know, so faith in Jesus, y'all, man, he does so much good stuff for you. So he is doing so much good stuff for me. What the devil tried to do to try to hurt us here in this church, God gave me something even better, even better, y'all. I've got help now. Where I can actually rely on. I've got help now. Where I know the devil ain't going to try to confuse that person. And get that person to try to stop not helping. I've got help y'all. And good, reliable, consistent help. But this is what God is looking for from you guys. Good, consistent, longevity. Following in him. Not yourself. Too many people y'all. In the world today that go to church, do their own things. Most of the church, this is what the Lord tells me, most of the church today is already in that oneness stuff. Oneness. Most of the church, you know, they, they got the, the one world religion, the one faith, the one world faith, and the oneness. And I can do, um, I am like God. I could do what I want to do. 
and da, da 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 Most of the church thinks that way. Did you know that? Jesus says, I put you here. I put you in this church right here. And you know it. Every one of you know it too, don't you? Every one of you. I told you, go look on JesusDoers.com at the testimonial page. Some of the ones that left, even they know this is where God put them. They know that. They know it when they come here. They know it. They know it 100%. And then they learn and they stay and they learn. They're like, wow, I love it here. Man, I'm getting taught so much. I'm, God is really helping me here. He's using me. He's teaching me. I'm learning. I'm understanding. And then, poop, God don't want me here. <laughs> There's no, you talk about confusion. Spirits of confusion. Most people are already following the oneness, y'all. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to go to this church anymore. I, well, you have that right. I'm going to go over there. And then you go over there. And like one girl told me, I tried to run from this church. She's like, I tried to run. I hate this church. I hate you. I hate this church. I hate everything about it. But God keeps bringing me back here. I try to run and he continues to pull me back here. I said, because you're running from God. You hate me. That's a spirit in you. Because I'm going to be straightforward with you and really try to help you out. I'm going to give you what you need. Why? Because I'm letting Jesus Christ speak through my body. I'm letting Jesus Christ speak through my life. I'm letting Jesus Christ speak through me. That's what I'm doing. As you should. You're supposed to do the same thing. Every one of you is supposed to do the same thing. It's called total submission to God. Being willing, man, sometimes to go out into the uncomfortable and speak Jesus to the people, y'all. We got to go show love to the people. Love doesn't mean letting them walk all over you with fakeness and phoniness and, and soft words and softness. And No, love is going out there and telling the truth, man. This is what's happening, y'all. This is what we need to do. This is what God wants from you, y'all. Let him know the devil's trying to steal you. That's love, man. That's called humbleness. It's called humbleness to get out there and really try to help somebody. That's the humbleness that God is looking for in the church. A church that's humble enough, man, to go and tell people the truth. To get out there and fight for you. Mm, not, not much of it out there. So, those of us that is abiding in Jesus and not yourself, like this young man I was talking about, God just gave him his family back. He, got, he planned a camping trip <laughs> with his relative that wanted nothing to do with him a month ago. Now they're going camping. Amen. God has given me my family back. God has given me one of my closest family members to actually help me in the ministry. <laughs> to actually, so I can grow, so this church can grow. And with, with this family member, it will grow because I can rely on this young lady. I can rely on her with everything. I can trust her 100%. And I know she ain't going to just get mad about something, walk out and walk out on the church in a whim. And leave everything hanging. She would never. Even she would never do that to God. And I can trust her with that. Isn't that something? See how God is looking out for me y'all. Because I stay in his will. I've learned a very valuable lesson. That my what I want. Doesn't matter. At all. But what God wants is everything y'all. It's everything. Everything. God comes before <clears throat> you. <laughs> God comes before my family. God comes before me, y'all, in my life anyway. <clears throat> and that's when he'll use you. Oh, baby. And he'll bless you and use you and, and, and treat you and teach you. And oh, my goodness, y'all. That's when you get blessed. And some of you in this church right now is getting your blessings from God. Because some of you have been very faithful and abided in. And then some of you just ain't. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, you can go other places. You can. But it ain't where God puts you. I can tell you that. So there'll always be 
an emptiness when you're not following God. When you're following you, there will always be an emptiness. That's why the Bible tells you don't hop house to house. Jesus says, follow me, right? He didn't say follow yourself. Kim, you're not teaching Bible. Um, Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said not to hop around house to house. Stay in the house that I put you in because you're, you're following Jesus. And you know that when you come here, don't you? Stay in that house, get fed, grow, help the ministry grow, help the church. And God says, I give you something extra. I give you Africa. How many of you walk away from that? How many of you Jesus doers, Jesus lovers walked off from Africa and let them kids sit there and starve to death? How many of you lovers of Jesus did that? Hmm? Think about that, y'all. I mean, it's the truth. I'm speaking the truth to you. And Jesus Christ will speak the same thing when you stand in front of him. So will. Everything we have here, y'all, is a test from God. Did you know that? We have tests from God. Some of us is passing the test and some is failing. You got to decide, okay? And now those of us, and get back to this, that is passing his test because we choose to. He's blessing us, y'all. We know right now we can't get to Israel. We can't get there right now. Who in the right mind would want to go there right now? There was, I know a couple of weeks ago, they wasn't even letting Americans in, in there. So God gave us as a church, he's rewarding those of us in here, y'all, that's faithful to him. He's given us that online virtual Israeli tour with a tour guide, y'all. And uh, it's a beautiful thing what God does for this church, man. I love him, y'all. I'm so excited. His feast days are coming up. I'm so excited. It's time to build your Sukkot. I'm stoked. I'm totally stoked. We'll do an order of service out, out of my tabernacle that my husband's going to build. We'll do the order of service out of there. You guys get yourself all your burnt offerings together for the Lord. And that's not money. I'm not talking about that yet. I'm talking about your burnt offerings. That's willingness to submit to Jesus. Be willing to do what Jesus said to do. If you've done some wrong things, y'all, like you've done wrong to your church, reach out to your church and make, make amends. Make it right. Say your I'm sorry's. Admit your wrongs, man, and say I'm, I'm sorry. And there you go. Get, get stuff moving. Get stuff worked out. If not, you're in, God, you're in your own will, okay? And that's not following Jesus. And this is my humbleness to reach out and tell you that. You understand? This is my fruits of my spirit. The spirit of Jesus Christ that's in me. To reach out and try to help put you back on the narrow road the best I can because I don't have the ability to save you. But I know what you need to do. Right? Yeah. And there you go. So I encourage you to do so because God wants to bless you. Get back to the church God placed you in. Do the studies God has given you to learn from him so he can use you. Help your church. Help Africa, the very location he gave you. Because every one of you that decide, I don't want to be here no more. And you drop off. Well, that's one kid that's going to die because of you. That's one less mouth that's going to get any food, man. You know, so there you go. And God is testing us on all this stuff, y'all. Like Jesus said, those of you that do help and help Africa. He said, you can lay your head down on your pillow at night. And sleep very well. Those of you that walked away from it, you might have some hard time going to sleep at night. Okay? Jesus, y'all, be a Jesus doer, not a yourself doer. And Jesus blesses, He blesses the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, blesses those of us that follow Jesus and stick with Him no matter what. That's why some of you are getting blessed right now. Right now. That's why I'm getting blessed so much. I'm getting a lot of things done <clears throat> around this house that needed done. God is weeding out tears out the ministry and putting in real live help. People that really love God and that's willing to really help and make a difference to help the church grow. Their mind is on God and growing his kingdom. 
People that walk away from the church, you know what their mind is on? Trying to hurt me. Their mind ain't on God and his kingdom and trying to help his kingdom. Their mind is, I'm going to try to hurt Kim. You don't hurt me, y'all, because God will give me something better every time. Every time. It's not me, y'all. You hurt as God and the people in Africa. God will always give me something better and keep me going. Every time, every, and he's, this is his church. So it's not me you're actually hurting, but it's God. It's yourself. It's Africa. Yeah. The road's narrow, y'all. See this road? It's narrow. I'm always on it, Anna. Always. The question is, are you? All right. I'll see you guys today in church at 2 o'clock in the barn. Go to JesusDoers.com. The link is there under the big red barn. It's our Google Meet room. That's where we have our church. That's where Jesus Christ put me and you. He did that. Okay? And then we're going to so tell you after church, so you don't know what time that will be, uh, what we're going to do about the virtual tour. Because our virtual tour is today at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I've already asked all of you if you've received your keys. So I won't be looking for any final emails on that. If you haven't received a key, you need to come to the barn. Okay? And um, I'll tell you what to do in the barn. Because God says, even some of you that has are going, I know you've, God says, God told me, you didn't, that you're, you're, you've pulled away from our church. Well, God's calling you back. Who? God. And, and I know who you are because some of you had me reach out to you in email. I mean, in messages and email. Remember that? Well, that's what God said. Kim, reach out to this one. This one? Yep, reach out to that one. God knows what you're thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. God knows what you're thinking. God says, reach out to that one. This one is following after enemy lines. Reach out to that one. So I reached out to you guys and I said... The Lord told me to reach out and pray for you. He knows what's on your mind. Remember that, y'all? Yeah? Well, he knows what you're, what you're up to. And God says, you're not in my will. And I have to tell you that. And you get to choose. But I tell you, those of us that's in his will, y'all, he blesses. He blesses us. What more do y'all want? Do you want to be blessed? Who wants to be blessed in here? Then follow the Lord, man. And people don't know, and when you say that, people say, I do follow the Lord. No, you're following yourself, man. One day you know what God is doing, this, this, and that. I know, I know, because I'm getting the word, I'm learning the word, I'm learning, I'm good. That's God, baby, that's God that does that. Anything else? Anybody try to pull you away from that? That's not God, y'all. God's not going to tear people away from God, Okay. So y'all get, y'all come on now, church. You got to wake up. There's too much oneness in the church today. That we got to be one with ourself. One with ourself. It's all about you, ain't it? That's how it is today in churches. It's whatever you want goes. Well, I'm sorry. That's not the narrow way, y'all. The narrow way is whatever God wants goes. I hear a lot of people say, I am following God, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm like, you're following yourself, man. Y'all church, you got to listen. Oh, in Jesus name, God is speaking to you. He's talking to you right now. He's saying this, follow me. That's what Jesus is saying. Follow me. I'm not going to lead you astray. He's like, I'm not confused. Satan is bringing a lot of confusion in all the churches in the world. Follow Jesus, y'all. We're at the last hour. Do you understand this? Please understand this. And I saw a lot of, quote unquote, people thought they were Christians going to hell, y'all. And I know why they're going. I know why, okay? And I'm seeing people do the very things that's going to carry their soul straight to hell. So you guys have to start doing things God's way if you're walking with God. It's got to be his way, y'all. Not yours. His way. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you guys at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time today in the barn. Just a couple hours. JesusStewards.com. Big Red Barn. God bless y'all. 
Get ready. I'm excited. I'm excited, y'all. God, is, like I said, he's blessing. This is a big, fat blessing to do this big tour with you guys. I'm so excited. And it is so almost like you're there kind of thing. And it's the best we can get right now since we can't actually get there. So thank you, Jesus, man. What a, God really blesses our church, y'all. He does. He keeps on blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see y'all today at 2 o'clock.